Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here from Octo Studio, and today I wanted to show you part two of how to make a jumping game on the phone. In this part, I'll show you how to add more obstacles and multiple levels. So yeah, let's get started. So in the last part of this series, we got to this point in our jumping game where you have a character that can jump and these moving obstacles that go past. Now let's make it so there are multiple levels or multiple regions in your game. So you can just tap on this button to add a new backdrop for the new level or the new area. And you can tap the plus sign and then just pick whatever you want the next level to look like. You could add any one of the backdrops that's here or you could also tap photos and upload a picture of a backdrop. So I think I'll do that with this one. And to switch between the backdrops, you can drag out this set backdrop block. And so, you know, this will set the backdrop to that beginning level and you can tap on the menu here and just choose your other backdrop. And so with this, you can switch between them. And so now the question is, when do we want it to switch to our next level? What we could do is, if the player gets their score up to a certain number, like let's say two, then we go to the next level. So how about after the player finishes a jump, we can check if the score equals two, then if it is, then we can set the backdrop to that next level one. So let's try it out. Oh, except one problem. At the beginning of the game, it's just already starting at the level two backdrop. So I will drag this uh, set backdrop block here. And so when the game starts, it sets it to our first backdrop. That's looking better. So, okay, I completed one jump and then I complete another jump. Now my score got to two and so I got to the next level. And how about we make it a little more exciting for the player rather than just changing the backdrop. So, you know, with this block in the events category, there's the when backdrop switches block. And so if you just drag that out, now you can make something happen whenever the scene switches to a certain backdrop. So, you know, I'll choose this level two backdrop. And so you could have it really do anything you want. How about we'll make it put some text. Can I do this without typos? Level two, ah, I did it. And, you know, maybe I'll change the font color and put it into a pixel font, I like that. And, you know, I can also have it play a sound. So I'm just gonna tap on the sound name here and I can tap this choose a sound button. And then I think I will pick this one for the level music. Obviously in your game, you can pick anything you want. And so I will drag that block up here and I'll set it to play sound and continue so that it plays the sound and shows the text at the same time. So let's try it out. I am getting through the game, jumping over the ghosts. And there we go. Now I've got to level two. And by the way, in your game, if you want to add more levels, all you have to do is just tap this plus sign here to add an else. And then actually, if you tap it again, you'll get an else if, and you could say else if the score equals five, then set it to another backdrop. So I'll drag out another set backdrop block. I'll just tap here and I can add another one to be level three. Maybe I'll add this one. And then you just also have to copy this code. So you could copy it by long pressing on it and just tapping duplicate. And so now we can, you know, set that and give it some text for level three, except I'm gonna make the text darker so you can actually see it. And yeah, let's try that all out. So jumping over the ghosts, gaming, made it to level two, jump over that. And then now I get to level three. So with this, you can pretty much add as many areas and as many levels as you want to your game. So we've got many areas for our player to explore. Now let's make the enemies or like the obstacles a little more interesting because right now there's only a ghost. So to add another enemy, you can just tap here to see the sprite list and I will tap on the ghost and I'll just tap here to duplicate it. And so now I've got these two ghosts that will have the same code as each other. So I just place them where I want them each to start at the beginning of the game and let's try it out. So yeah, now I have two enemies and now I've got to jump over them both. But if you notice right now, they always come, you know, in a pair like this. They're always this far apart from each other. Let's make it so that one of the obstacles goes across the screen at random points throughout the game. So the player can't predict it. So I'll go to the sprite list and go to my second ghost. And you know, for fun, I'm gonna make this obstacle look different. So I'll click this replace button and I think I'm gonna pick the mountains because I think they look like some rocks. If I can find them, where are they? There they are. So I'm gonna get rid of this code because I don't want the mountains to just always move 50 steps across the screen. I want them to, at random points throughout the game, go from exactly this spot to exactly this spot. So let's make that happen. To make the mountains start over here, I can drag out a go to block and I can tap this location to pick where I want them to start from and I'll have them go to there. And right now, if you'll notice, it's set to go there on 
fast speed, so it would look like this, but I'm actually going to set it to go there at instant speed, so it just starts right there. And then how can I make the mountains go all the way across the screen, like exactly, like exactly all the way to this edge? Because we can make a sprite move in this direction with the move block, but clearly 50 isn't enough to get across the screen, so how much should we have it move by? Well, if you tap here to look at this little location menu again, you can see that the screen is actually 320 pixels wide, so if we make it move 320, that will make it go exactly across the screen. So if we attach these blocks together, then we get one time where the item zooms across at the player. And I can put this in a forever block to make it always keep doing it. But remember how we want it to come at random points throughout the game, not always becoming in a predictable way? Well, we could make that happen by dragging out a wait block, and then we could put in a random block from the more blocks category, and we could make it wait you know, some random number of seconds before it appears. So that will make the mountain go by at random points in the game. Let's try that out. Oh, you know, one thing is we should make the mountains be hidden at the beginning of the game because right now they're just sort of sitting there. So, okay, let's try that again. And okay, the ghost is going by, um, but the mountains are just never going by. And that's actually because uh, we need to make them show up again when we want them to go by. So after it finishes waiting, I will put a show block to have it appear. And so let's try that out. So, okay, so some rocks came along and I'll jump over those. And we also want the rocks to hide after they finish their travel across the screen. So let's try that now. And okay, I'm jumping, waiting to see if some rocks show up. Ah, okay, so there's some rocks. I will jump over that. And there we go. Now it hides when it gets to the other side of the screen. Oh, and there's some more. Can I, ah, but there you go. Now you have an obstacle that sort of comes at more unpredictable times during the game. So it can make it sort of more challenging for the player sometimes too challenging. That's almost everything that I wanted to show you in part two, but the very last thing I did want to show you is, so you may have noticed that in this game, you actually get a point for jumping, even if you didn't successfully jump over anything. Like right here, I'm just jumping and I actually got a point, but I you know, didn't jump over any objects. So I shouldn't really get a point for that. So if you want to fix that issue, one way you could fix that is have the player not get points for jumping, but just get points for however long they manage to stay alive in the game. So you could just say forever, wait one second, and then the player score increases. So it's basically like you're trying to get the high score of how long you can stay playing the game. So I'll make this start when the play button is pressed. And so now you just get a point for as long as you're able to you know, stay playing. And if you'll notice, I moved this code along with the change score block because right after you get a point, that's when I want the game to check if you got enough of a score to go to the next level. So anyway, this is another way to do the score if you want to. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you in step two. In later parts, I'll show more things like how to do a high score and power-ups and more things like that. Um, but anyway, for now, I hope you have fun making your jumping games and I'll see you in the next video.